Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. Today's topic, we're talking about hidden secrets for coping with PCOS. We'll discuss what PCOS is, how you can deal with it naturally, and of course, a lot of the symptoms that go along with developing and having PCOS. And maybe you're not sure you've got some symptoms that may be related. Well, we're going to break it all down for you in this hour all about PCOS. Hello, Norm. How are you? Hello, Dr. Janine. I'm really looking forward to the show. We were talking about this last week coming up. And I want to thank everybody for joining us, of course, for the Dr. Janine Show, a naturopathic doctor discussing all kinds of different issues every week. And you, you can look up previous episodes on YouTube. We're here every Monday night, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live and also on YouTube. And we invite you to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, click that bell too, so you always get advanced notifications of the next show coming up. And share the video, share the wealth of knowledge that you are getting from the Dr. Janine Show. Remember that Dr. Janine will be online during the show to answer your comments and questions that you can leave below in the comments section. And be sure to follow her on Facebook and TikTok and also on Instagram at Dr. Janine, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E to get uh, some of last week's recipes or other episode ideas, all sorts of fun stuff that sometimes you don't even see here on the show. So that's fun. So what is PCOS? What does it actually stand for even? So PCOS is polycystic, so PC, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it has to do with the ovaries in women. Of course, this is where the eggs are. Well, I can't show you on Lucy because she doesn't have, well, she's androgynous. She doesn't have <laughs> ovaries, but I would have shown you. Yeah. But in the ovaries, maybe we'll take a look at a picture here, in the ovaries, it can develop cysts and the cysts are benign so they're not cancerous but that's what the syndrome is and it's very common in women starts you know in younger women when they start with their cycles and has a lot to do with the hormones which we're going to talk about hmm. but it can lead to things like infertility which is very concerning hair growth in all the wrong places for women and even pain and a lot of abdominal pain uh, around the cycles as well so definitely mm. something of concern and certainly on the rise and we'll talk about why that's happening as well so my tip overall for someone who is explain is displaying some of the symptoms of PCOS and we're going to talk a lot about the symptoms in this episode of PCOS is not to downplay those symptoms and if something rings true you know for someone who's watching to certainly use the tips in this video today all about natural solutions for PCOS and use the tips to be able to help yourself and don't sort of downplay the fact that you've got these symptoms they they may be common um, but certainly it's not normal to have the symptoms that we'll be talking about but what causes uh, PCOS in women well it has a lot to do with the hormones so one of the causes would be androgen. So androgens are the male hormones um, and certainly when there's an elevated testosterone level this can be a part of that. So this can happen with stress, this can happen higher up in the brain when we talk about the hypothalamus and the pituitary, the HPA, and this is related to the stress to the adrenal gland, so it's called the HPA axis. And when this gets mm. out of balance and those negative feedback loops um, are not sort of giving the right signals anymore, this can cause part of the syndrome with hmm. the, the cysts on the ovaries. Another one is metabolic syndrome. So when we take a look at a lot of the symptoms of the PCOS, we'll see that they're very much correlated to metabolic syndrome, which we talked a lot about in our episode when we shared our episode about sugar addiction yes. and, and talking about, you know, the problems with sugar and spiking insulin and then insulin resistance yeah. and having too much of the refined sugars in the diet. This is a part of that. Wow. So yep. um, the other part is toxicity. So toxicity hmm. can be another cause for PCOS. And why is that? Well, certainly our environment is not as pristine as it once was years ago. We have a lot of environmental toxins, thousands and thousands yeah. of environmental toxins have been discovered and one of the groups is called xenoestrogens and I call them sort of the bad estrogens and they're in the environment, they're in our makeup, in our creams, mm. in the air that we breathe and one group which is really common is BPA. So you may have heard of BPA, yes. you know the whole thing about non-BPA plastic bottles yep. um, and the way that, and I'll get back to that in just a second, but the way that these xenoestrogens work 
is that there are these negative estrogens, and if this were my estrogen receptor, those bad estrogens will fit into that receptor and then have a negative impact on the cell and the health of that cell, leading to endocrine disorders, female cancers, and all these things. So this is, this is not what we want happening. Now, the good thing about some of the phytoestrogens, so plant estrogens, and this is controversial, I know, and when people think, oh no, you know, uh, with these endocrine disorders for women, they think, oh, I can't take plant estrogens, but they've actually been proven in the science, so things like soy is the big controversial one. Yeah. But what they do, because they're plant estrogens, is they also fit into that receptor site, and they can then block out those bad estrogens, the xenoestrogens because oh. they can't get absorbed because those, whoops, the plant yeah. estrogens, yeah. see, bad estrogen, be gone. <laughs> hey, you're gone, good. you're out of here. So those plant estrogens are blocking, and that, that's a good thing, and that's what the studies yeah. prove, is that by having soy products and things, this can be very protective. So some of the herbal medicines, which we're gonna talk about in this episode, mm -hmm. they also have the phytoestrogens, which is very protective against those bad estrogens. So the okay. BPA is a xenoestrogen, and one of the things that you can do, so we know plastic water bottles, for yes. sure, is to look at the recycling symbol on the bottom and you'll see a number um, on that oh, on yeah. that little triangle mm -hmm. and that number indicates mm -hmm. what type of plastic it is so the worst ones that have the BPA unfortunately are number three and number seven Okay. So you don't want to be using number three and number seven. Right. Now there's other hidden sources of BPA, which I wasn't even aware of until I started doing the research for this show. Um, beer cans sometimes have, in the lining, have BPA. Soda cans, so pop. I had no idea. Okay. It, I had no idea as well. So certainly if you can buy something in a non-BPA bottle, it's certainly mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Cans, not so good. Canned food as well it is a source for BPA. We talked about the plastic containers uh, right. as well. And so food containers, so I always try to use glass at home. If you have leftovers and things, you put it into a glass container, much better. Carbonless receipts. Oh. So yeah, so the thermal paper. So when you go get gas, you buy groceries and they hand you the receipt. If it was printed on a carbonless thermal type of paper, mm -hmm. that has BPA. Oh, okay, wow. And what's so interesting is that they did a study in the US and they were checking the urinary, it's excreted in the urine, so through the kidneys, levels of BPA. And they found that cashiers had the highest amount of BPA because why? Because they're handing out the receipts to all day their long. customers all day long. Right. So that to me also in this uh, report they also found that the can people that were can, uh, consuming canned vegetables the highest you know having more than once a day canned vegetables had the highest amount of BPA as well. Wow. So okay. always fresh fruits and vegetables as yeah. much as possible trying to stay away from canned even canned tomatoes can have the BPA yeah. which a lot of people use for their sauce and they're sure. you know when they're making their stews and their yep. pasta or whatever yep. canned not so good glass is definitely better wow. um, in terms of not having the BPA so my tip of course and if you weren't you know people for women that that have PCOS or have endocrine disorders or any type of hormonal issues to definitely decrease the, the BPA exposure. So mm -hmm. we know of plastics, absolutely, but the other hidden uh, sources that we, we talked about and decrease that exposure as much as possible. I, I mean, it's, it's never going to be a healthy thing for you. Mm. So what exactly are the symptoms of PCOS? How do you know if you have it? Yeah, so the most common symptoms of PCOS would definitely be irregular menstrual cycles. So for women who are difficult, having difficulty, it's not, you know, 28 to 31, 32 days is, is normal for most women. Mm -hmm. um, if that's not happening and it's very irregular, that could be one of the symptoms of PCOS. Another one as, you know, this goes on is infertility because thinking of the ovaries 
now. There's cysts there, so we're losing the natural functioning of the ovaries. So that infertility, and that's often why how it's even you know discovered by by a woman's doctor hmm. is that they'll they'll get tested for because of the infertility, and lo and behold, they find that they that there's cysts on the ovaries. So you wow. know that's definitely definitely and on the rise as well. I th and I'm convinced it's because of our toxicity and all the plastics and all the our exposure to some of these environmental xenoestrogens is part of that. Weight gain, which women certainly don't like most times. Yeah. Pelvic pain, so there could yeah. be a lot of pain and discomfort as well. Acne, so in oh. our former episode. Last week. Yeah, we didn't even mention this, but again, we talked about the hormones and how that's related to the acne, but yeah, so for anybody who has severe acne problems or even you know moderate acne or acne is troublesome for most people yeah. to check out that episode but certainly yeah. to know that it could be related to the PCOS as well. Um, another symptom of PCOS would be anxiety and depression so certainly that goes along with if there's yeah. fertility issues weight just, gain and, and weight gain just not yeah. feeling great and yeah. pain and yeah. the cycle I mean we've got enough I always say this <laughs> we have enough to deal with as women to have yeah. to deal with this kind of hormonal stuff yes. and with PCOS too you you know, it's, it's a lot to, yes. to have to, to deal with. Thinning hair would be another one. Hirsutism. So hirsutism is the growth of hair in the manly places. So the chin, mm -hmm. one of the most common that my patients always had was the chin hair is growing that they would, or, you know, a lot of facial, dark facial hair mm. in women um, definitely related to PCOS. And that has to do with the hormones, mm. but the women can even get um, chest hair. Good and on, on the hands and on the toes. So mm -hmm. again, an indication that there's an imbalance. Deeper voice, so women developing a deeper voice. Skin tags as well. So what's interesting mm. with the skin tags is that this is related to metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. So this is the high carbohydrates um, and the refined sugars in the diet. So we're gonna get to that in a second. Okay. And brain fog, so just having foggy thinking can be related as well to the, the PCOS. So my tip then would be certainly if you've got a lot of these symptoms is not to freak out because I know women when they hear, you know, oh my God, like they do the checklist. Has yeah. they're listening to the program, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's concerning. Yeah. Not to freak out. This is very treatable and we can do a lot naturally. It's one of those conditions that, oh, okay, you know, we can really, we can really have such a positive impact on PCOS and doing things naturally. And that's why we're doing this show to really, you know, give women the opportunity to explore the the natural methods and how to how the diet really does impact the PCOS, mm -hmm. but how this can really um, help anybody who's watching and is concerned. And it is very treatable. So that's that's my tip. Don't freak out. It's it's a good thing that you're here and you're listening and that you're learning ways to you know help this condition. Are there foods that can help with PCOS? Yes, there's definitely a list of foods that can help with PCOS, certainly increasing raw fruits and vegetables. And there's specific ones that are uh, and have been proven um, in the studies to help with something called myo-inositol. So myo-inositol is in oranges and cantaloupe. And in hmm. Australia, it's called rock melon. Rock melon, I love yeah, that. I love that, yeah, it rocks. <laughs> um, but oranges and cantaloupe have this myo-inositol, and the study actually shows that it's been very helpful for restoring o ovarian function, and specifically in PCOS patients, and to find that metabolic balance again. So that that is very promising. So now we have, there's a fine line because oranges and cantaloupe have natural sugar, fructose, which can yeah. be a little bit of a problem when we're talking about insulin resistance and liver function and things. So mm -hmm. in moderation, certainly not cantaloupe juice, which I've never heard of, I don't know, maybe it exists, but eating the fresh cantaloupe can in I, its whole form. Can I jump in? I know yeah. people who have juiced cantaloupe, however. Oh, have they? Like thrown it into a juicer along with an apple, along with an oh, orange. Oh, yeah. Like, so that I don't like as much because okay. the, the less fiber yeah, yeah. from a fruit is going to spike the insulin and your glucose levels much quicker. So it's taxing your insulin. And this is where we can get into the insulin resistance. Thank so you. Yeah. I prefer it in the whole food form always. So having a slice of cantaloupe, you don't want to overdo it, but everything in moderation would be very helpful. 
Orange juice, not so much. The same theory. You want to eat the whole orange and not just the juice because we want to maintain the fiber, helps to slow down that insulin response, and it's much healthier that way. Another food group uh, or food that can help with PCOS is protein. So having an absorbable protein source that is well tolerated is great. And I find a lot of women don't get enough protein in their diet, especially if they shy away from a lot of the heavy meats and animal products. Mm -hmm. If they're going to more towards a vegetarian product, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we definitely you know love vegetarian proteins. And this yeah. is one, so our great sponsors at Vitatree who sponsor this show um, have you know this wonderful vegetarian protein it's highly highly absorbed so it would be a fantastic adjunct into a healthy diet um, to get that highly absorbed protein and it's not a pea protein so this is based on fava beans there's no sugar which is a of course, great for PCOS because you're not going to be spiking the insulin levels. So there's no carbohydrates in here or very little, 1.3 grams of carbs. Um, there's some natural fiber, three grams, and you know, just a wonderfully balanced vegetarian protein that is a great way, you know, to get that extra protein into the diet. It's not going to upset the stomach. It's easily mixed into water, highly soluble. So you can just sort of shake it in a shaker cup and go. So we thank our friends at Vita Tree for helping mm -hmm, us with, mm -hmm. with supplying that, which is fantastic. So it would seem that exercise is pretty much good for everything we talk about, but does exercise help with PCOS? Yes, exercise is definitely, you know, something that we definitely want to incorporate into our daily routine for everyone. I mean, for overall, we talk about exercise, I think, in every yeah. <laughs> single show that we do at the Dr. Janine sure, show. Yeah. But you have to be careful of the type of exercise because of the HPA axis, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the adrenals. The adrenals are the stress hormone producers. And in times of stress, this could be an issue with the PCOS that we want to have a balanced exercise routine, balanced diet, balanced exercise, meaning that we don't want to overstress and overtax the adrenals, which can be the case if it's a very strenuous exercise. So people who do long distance or running or biking or swimming and sprinting and hit exercises and spin classes and anything that's going to stress your system overly mm -hmm. for a prolonged period of time, I would not recommend when you're dealing with a PCOS. I would prefer mm. that women are doing more relaxed types of exercises like yoga. Yes, still intense, but not taxing to the adrenals as much. Right? Yes, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna strengthen things, but yeah, and depending on the type of yoga that you do. So yoga, yes. Pilates, great. Walking, so versus running, right? The walking is still a great form of exercise. You may do, need to do it a little bit longer mm -hmm. to get the same types of benefits. Um, but yeah, just to to not to and be mindful of not stressing out the adrenals mm -hmm. when we're talking about the exercise. Going back to the diet. Having healthy fats is really important as well. So when we're talking about, you know, the, the proper diet for PCOS, you want to have those healthy fats. They help to keep you feeling full <laughs> and they're anti-inflammatory. So right. avocados and the nuts and seeds are fantastic. Yeah. Again, in their whole form, usually unroasted, unsalted, I, I prefer, and fresh. So right. with nuts, you have to be careful. You don't want to leave them out. They can go rancid very quickly. So you want to consume them and only buy enough. When you buy a huge container for one person, it's likely that they're going to go bad, you know, if you're not going through that right. amount of nuts. Yeah, in yeah. our family, we get a big container because we have like so many kids at <laughs> home and we all eat the nuts, right? Yeah. But for someone, that's just another recommendation is just only buy what you can consume in, in a week or two because it will mm -hmm. um, go bad very quickly because of the, the oils in there. And yeah. the, we think of oils that go rancid. So that, that would be another thing to th consider. Hmm. And decreasing the carbs. So we talked about the refined sugars. You want to, you know, all of those refined sugars sugars and too many carbohydrates in the diet, even the juices and things, we want to decrease that because that will help uh, to stave off the metabolic syndrome. And we know that insulin problem and insulin resistance is definitely related to PCOS. Oh. And this is huge. I mean, this is not this is not just me saying this. This is, you yeah. know, there's a bunch of studies that show the connection between the the metabolic syndrome 
And in this study, it's shown that metabolic syndrome is twice as common in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome as compared to the general population. Wow, okay. So that's a huge statistic, huge, yeah. right? That, you know, and I, I used to work, when I first came out of the naturopathic college, I used to work with a medical doctor and she, she trained all over the world um, in terms of specifically female uh, endocrine disorders. And that was the one thing that she said, and, I think back, I mean, this is going back a few, a few years. Um, back then, this is one of the things that she taught me was that definitely there was that link. It's not something that I learned in medical school. Back, right. you know, at the naturopathic college, I never, I didn't learn that. I learned it specifically from her because she had done some in, in intensive, you know, research and study and, and mm -hmm. programs to, to learn about PCOS. And that was, you know, always interesting to me that there was such this, you know, absolute link between yeah. the high sugar diet and and too many carbohydrates and just women not being able to handle it and developing the insulin resistance and then developing the polycystic ovaries. So very important. The other thing is caffeine. So too much caffeine can definitely hmm. be a problem with polycystic ovaries. So everything in moderation. We know that caffeine, if you drink too much coffee, it depletes your your minerals and we know that we need our minerals to help to detoxify heavy metals and toxins in that we're um, inundated with yes. in the environment so really important to to make sure that you're not having too much caffeine so my tip in terms of diets and and the foods that help the pcos is certainly to increase whole oranges cantaloupe into the diet mm. not juicing it um, and that's for the myo inositol which has been proven in the science in the research to really help with polycystic ovaries and helping to actually find a nice balance with the insulin as well and the that glycemic response and we're really glad that you are here for the dr janine show every monday night at seven o'clock on facebook live and also on youtube and remember to follow her on instagram facebook TikTok at dr janine d-o-c-t-o-r-j-a-n-i-n-e like subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell too so you get another uh, notification of the next show coming along and remember to share the videos. Share them with family and friends. Gives them something else to look at, something that actually empowers them with some knowledge for themselves and for their families. Dr. Janine is always online during the show too, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And when we talk about what's coming up next week, you can leave your questions uh, or comments in advance of the show. And of course, we always look for show ideas. So there you go, a lot to think about with the Dr. Janine show. But I do want to know if there are any supplements that can help with PCOS. Yes, there are specific supplements to help with PCOS and certainly doing a full body detox. You know that I'm all about detoxification. When we take a look at Lucy again, sure. we don't always think about our internal organs and the internal organs, whether it's the lungs, the big ones, certainly the Cardiovascular system, our liver, our digestive tract. I mean, the digestive tract is 15 feet long at least. It could be up to 20 feet long. Wow. And we take a look at all of this and we don't always consider the fact that these toxins can be building up internally. And for people who say, and I know there's a lot of skeptical people who say, oh no, our, our organs can completely deal with that toxicity. I don't really agree with that. I think maybe three, four hundred years ago, we didn't have the same type of toxic load from the environment right. and our organs would have been able to handle it back then. And certainly eating a healthful diet and lots of greens and detoxification, you know, within yeah. the diet itself, how we used to eat, that doesn't always happen anymore. Right. So, and, and I don't think we if you think about our phones and things that got that, we always have to update our phones and get the newest, yeah. you know, our organs never got that update in terms of dealing with that toxic load that we have in our environment. So it's so important to do full body detoxification. So specific supplements that, that help with that would be, you know, herbal hmm. medicines that target the internal organs. So for people who have questions about that, certainly, you know, look at our links below and you'll get some information there about full body detox. Another supplement that I love is magnesium. So magnesium is definitely helpful at chelating or trapping heavy metal toxins. So that's important as part of the detox protocol, but it also it's a muscle relaxant. So I always find when it comes to cramping and pain and menstrual 
disorders and, and anything related to pain and the spasm of muscles, yeah. this is a problem, you know, for women, absolutely, and for women with PCOS. So magnesium can be very helpful, and I always found clinically that that was, you know, a game changer mm -hmm. because most women, men as well, are magnesium deficient. So we have a whole show on magnesium deficiency, of course, where we shared a lot of info about that. So, you know, absolutely, everybody can check that out mm -hmm. to get more information about magnesium deficiency, but that would be one of them in terms of supplements that help with PCOS, as well as green tea. So a study has shown that the effect on, of green tea on metabolic and, horm and the hormonal aspects of polycystic ovarian syndrome, especially in overweight and obese women, um, and dealing with those symptoms was very helpful. And the conclusion was that the consumption of green tea by overweight and obese women suffering from PCOS helps to lead to weight loss, a, decree, a decrease in fasting insulin. So yeah. when we're talking about that metabolic syndrome and the insulin sensitivity or insensitivity and a decrease in the level of free testosterone. So that okay. is huge. Yeah. Um, and I, I love green tea. Green tea is in the supplements that I personally take. Um, so that's, that's something that's very important, you know, in drinking a bit of green tea. And that would be my tip is to drink some green tea every day if, if you're a woman that's suffering with PCOS. So another mineral that I love is zinc. And the research has found specifically for PCOS that in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that the which is sort of the gold standard of studies, yeah. that the effects of zinc supplementation had promising results and had significantly decreased hirsutism, which is that hair growth mm -hmm. for women on the face and places that women shouldn't be growing hair. Right. Uh, the zinc was very helpful and for the hair loss as well, for the alopecia that was related to the PCOS. And there is other you know, promising things in the study with zinc supplementation. So yeah. when we're talking about zinc supplementation, the best type is is always the bisglycinate, so that's the form that I like. So again, for links to that, you can check that out um, below. And you know, always taking absorbable supplements is the best way to go. Now, do you know how you would know? So some people don't even know. If you get, for, for people who get, and especially women with PCOS, if you get the white spots on your nails, yeah. So you know how, how people can get those white spots? That can be related to a zinc deficiency. Okay. So that would be a telltale sign that maybe you need to supplement with your diet with some zinc. Now, natural food sources of zinc, one of my favorites is pumpkin seeds. So pumpkin seeds hmm. contain zinc, so that's a great natural source for, for getting some zinc into the diet naturally. So I know, Dr. Janine, you do like to do things naturally as we've discussed in every single episode. Are there herbal medicines also that can help with PCOS? Yes, so the specific herbal medicines that help with PCOS that have been found in the research, one of them is curcumin. So turmeric is the root and curcumin is the active component of the turmeric. And in this study, they found that the anti-inflammatory effects, we know that it's a huge anti-inflammatory, but the anti-inflammatory effects of curcumin specifically on insulin resistance. So again, finding that balance with blood glucose, and in levels of interleukin-6, C-reactive protein, which are inflammatory markers in the body, and the liver histology, so what the cells look like in the liver in polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and this was induced in rats, so this is, yes, a rat study, but often it gives us great information for humans, because some of these sure. things you wouldn't want to induce this in a woman, obviously, yeah, you, yeah. right? But gave some promising, you know, um, results in terms of the curcumin actually decreased the liver inflammation by induction of the insulin sensitivity and reducing the hepatic necrosis, meaning the destruction of the liver cells. So therefore they concluded that the curcumin may be considered as a protective factor against inflammatory state of PCOS. So huge. I mean, that's, that's, a, and I love, I love curcumin. And so that's something that Absolutely is one of those things that I take as well because just the, the research around, you know, the anti-cancer effects, the anti-inflammatory mm. effects, the beauty effects for the skin mm. 
for the liver function for I mean it just yeah. curcumin is just such a powerhouse of nutrients and antioxidants wow. that I I love it I couldn't live without it and for the joints and inflammation and pain like it, it keeps me <laughs> keeps me going yeah. um, and for energy levels too and and so it's it really is fantastic herbal medicine to help with PCOS specifically chase tree berry so vitex vitex is another herbal medicine that's been studied specifically for PCOS and the research has found that you know specifically in the clinical finding it has been very helpful in terms of lowering prolactin levels high prolactin is re is related to infertility so this is why polycystic ovaries you know women that have it they often have a high prolactin level they don't know how to bring it down hmm. so vitex is or chase tree berry is the common name for it is fantastic for lowering that prolactin also helps to increase serum progesterone which is needed for pregnancy and improve specifically pr pregnancy rates so huge okay. another one is simisifuga and sim simisifuga is black cohosh and black cohosh has also been proven to help with binding the estrogen receptors so when we talked about the estrogen receptors yes very important and helps also and that was in the pituitary but reduces the LH secretion so this is the pituitary function again increases the progesterone and limits the anti-estrogen effects when used in combination with one of the drugs so again using natural medicines there's definitely mm -hmm. a place for natural medicines herbal medicines in the treatment of the PCOS mm -hmm. with some very promising results so my tip here is definitely for women that are suffering mm -hmm. is to know that there are natural solutions and to investigate and consider taking some of these potent herbal supplements to really help with balancing the hormones and finding that relief for the for the PCOS and always of course looking for a whole food supplementation um, which doesn't have the fillers and all those things that shouldn't be in vitamin supplements so for links to that we have that below in the description to help women that are looking to to do something naturally and certainly I know for those of you that are watching and maybe you're suffering you've got symptoms related to PCOS or maybe infertility issues, please do leave your questions and comments below and make sure that you're following me. So my handle is at Dr. Janine, spelled out D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E. And you can also look up this, oh, this way. <laughs> I always go the wrong way. Doctor, at Dr. J9 Live. We have podcasts now where you can listen to Norm and I and listening to myself. And I'm on TikTok, and I'm not dancing on TikTok, but I am on TikTok <laughs> as for as long as we have TikTok. Um, also on Instagram, Instagram Reels. I, I'm everywhere. It's crazy, <laughs> and and putting out a lot of natural information to help to empower you and over your own body and and to really give you some tools and things that you can easily do and implement into your own lifestyle please share this video as well if you know a woman who is suffering it could be a friend it could be someone who has a lot of the symptoms that we're talking about maybe isn't even has been diagnosed yet with PCOS that it could be there could be something of course and I'm sure that we're sharing in the video that will help them with their you know maybe discovering that they maybe have and they'll investigate further if they have PCOS but certainly a lot of the natural tips that we share are easy to implement to really have that positive impact and turn those symptoms around. You know, we're at the time of the program, and we always reach this time in the program in every show where we learn the Dr. J9 truth. So when it comes to PCOS, what is the Dr. J9 truth? So the Dr. J9 truth for PCOS is to really take a look in energy medicine at the second chakra. So the ovaries are in the second chakra. And again, we have seven chakras in the body. The second chakra is in this lower abdominal area. And the second chakra is related to relationship issues and as well as financial issues. And so that chakra has to be functioning 
and rotating. All of our chakras rotate in a certain direction, so they have to be functioning in the right direction mm. and have the right amount of energy, and that energy of the second chakra has to be balanced with all of the other chakras. Mm -hmm. And this is something that in energy medicine can be helped by you know, doing meditation and doing yeah. acupuncture. One of the most powerful acupuncture points is in that lower abdomen, right in the midline. And it can really do wonders to, to help to open up that chakra, but to balance those meridians in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. to make sure that you know things are balanced. And it can really help. Acupuncture is fantastic for PCOS, and it's one of the things that is highly, highly recommended. Another thing would be to take a look at your life and maybe evaluate what's going on. Was there yeah. a past relationship issue? Is there a current relationship issue? Yeah. Is and that is that related to why, you know, there's this imbalance in the ovaries and that toxicity has built up there? And releasing things on the emotional and energetic level can go a long way. I've helped so many women with this to, to release that energy, have a discussion around it, and just let it go and let it go. Yeah. And whatever that means for you to let it go to really help to, to alleviate that, that stress that's being held in the, in the second chakra. So you've definitely offered a lot of tips, a lot of tips for people to well, help themselves with PCOS. Can we recap them for everybody though, and maybe in point form? Yes, absolutely. So tip one was not to downplay the symptoms. So certainly any of the symptoms that we've discussed yeah. in the show, some of them more common that you could look up and others that you may not necessarily find in the literature or online, um, are, are, is not to downplay them. Be empowered, take action, and you know seek some, some help definitely, and use the tips in this video to, to help yourself. Mm. When, when we're talking about, you know, dealing with PCOS and coping with it naturally. Yeah. Another tip and tip number two is to decrease the BPA. So remember when we talked about the yeah. exposure in water bottles, this is this is a good one, you know, so you check that, that symbol, the number in that little triangle should not be a three or a seven. So we don't want threes or sevens. Okay. Um, and there's hidden sources of the BPA as well. So you may have to scroll back in the video to find the hidden secrets that yeah. we talked about, um, uh, the sources of that BPA, which I didn't even know about it until I started to research it for the show, which yeah. um, sort of, yeah, was was a, an eye opener. But to definitely, me. yeah. Tip number three was to not freak out. So certainly, if you're discovering that, oh my gosh, or you if you have PCOS, so a woman has PCOS, is you know get your blood work done, see your practitioner, but know that you can treat it naturally yeah. with the tips in this video. Tip number four was to increase your myo inositol. So that was oranges and cantaloupe or rock melon in yeah. Australia. And to eat it in its whole f food form. So don't juice it, but have it in its whole form. Yeah. And that goes a long way to help with, you know, balancing out the insulin, but those specific, uh, the nutrient, the myo-inositol helps with the PCOS symptoms, which is fantastic. Tip number five was to do exercise, but again, not too strenuous. So you don't want to stress out the adrenal glands. It should be a nice relaxing, but still a good workout. Yeah. So yoga, Pilates, fantastic. Walking as well. Um, and this, I, I think walking is fantastic because it has a meditative, just like yoga too, has a meditative meditative component to it and that helps to deal with the stress sure. and decreasing that stress is very important when we're talking about dealing with the PCOS and that hormonal imbalance. Tip number six was the green tea. So having uh, green tea, whether you're drinking it or taking it as a supplement or if it's the one that I take is mixed into um, fruits and veggies in, in the supplement that I take, really balancing to the body but also potent antioxidant and helps to keep the hormones balanced. So that's super important and zinc mm. as well. So the research has shown that zinc is very protective and helpful for PCOS sufferers as well. Tip number seven was taking a whole food herbal supplement. So things like Vitex, which is okay. fantastic, black cohosh um, as well. So chase tree berry and black cohosh, the common names, helpful for balancing those female hormones. Mm -hmm. So really, really protective and can be really helpful for fertility as well. Right. So this is where finding that balance with the prolactin, bringing the prolactin down, balancing yep. LH, FSH, um, estrogen and progesterone, helping to maintain that healthy pregnancy as well. We need to balance the progesterone, so super important. 
and the Dr. J9 truth was to address the second chakra. So again, that was all about relationship issues, maybe financial, if you stress about finances and, and you have financial and relationship issues, right. that's a double whammy, is to find some resolve. So whatever that means for women to really address that and to do it naturally. Thank you, it was a great show. And thank you to everybody who has watched this episode. Be sure to share it. I would love for you to share, you know, all the things that you You've learned in this episode with your friends and your loved ones the women that are suffering perhaps with the pcos or their hormonal imbalances infertility issues and all the tips that we shared in this episode today be sure to always take care of your good health and to do it naturally